peace of the Lord be with you, and good day. This is our devotion for August 2nd, uh, Wednesday, and um, our Old Testament reading for this week is 2 Chronicles chapter 28, verses 8 through 15, and um, beginning this out in the morning, so we'll follow the morning order of daily prayer, page 295 in the hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All right. Second uh, Chronicles chapter 28, beginning at verse 8. The men of Israel took captive 200,000 of their relatives, women, sons, and daughters. They also took much spoil from them and brought the spoil to Samaria. But a prophet of the Lord was there, whose name was Obed, and he went out to meet the army that came to Samaria, and said to them, Behold, because the Lord, the God of your fathers, was angry with Judah, he gave them into your hand. But you have killed them in a rage that has reached up to heaven. And now you intend to subjugate the people of Judah and Jerusalem, male and female, as your slaves. Have you not sins of your own against the Lord your God? Now hear me, and send back the captives from your relatives whom you have taken, for the fierce wrath of the Lord is upon you. Certain chiefs also of the men of Ephraim, Azariah the son of jo Johanan, Berechiah the son of Meshalemoth, Yehizekiah the son of Shalom, and Amasa the son of Hadlai stood up against those who were coming from the war, and said to them, You shall not bring the captives in here. For you propose to bring upon us guilt from the Lord in addition to our present sins and guilt. For our guilt is already great, and there is fierce wrath against Israel. So the armed men left the captives and the spoil before the princes and all the assembly. And the men who have been mentioned by name rose and took the captives. And with the spoil they clothed all who were naked among them. They clothed them, gave them sandals, provided them with food and drink, anointed them, and carrying all the feeble among them on donkeys, they brought them to their kinsfolk at Jericho, the city of palm trees. And they returned to Samaria. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, our sins are great against you, and your wrath deserves to be upon us. We deserve to have your wrath upon us. But just as the men of Israel took mercy on their kin and clothed them when they were naked, gave them sandals, provided them with food and drink, anointed them, and carried the feeble on donkeys. We give you thanks how you care for us, that you clothe us with your righteousness, that you feed us with the bread of life, who is Jesus, that you anoint us with his blood, and that you carry us into your eternal kingdom by your grace. We pray that as we study your word this morning, that you would be with us in that mercy, that you would grant us hearts that cling to you in that mercy, that cling to your promises that cling to your word, that cling to the knowledge that you are good and you are merciful. We thank you for Jesus who is our good Samaritan who carries us into his eternal kingdom and pray all these things in his name as he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right, um, as, we, as we read this passage, this is uh, one of those, I always feel like it gets these 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 uh, history pieces from the Old Testament can get can get a little bit um, a little bit confusing, and and the reason I tend to be confused by them the most uh, is because um, not because it's not clear what's being said, but it's it's uh, remembering that at a point you have a divided kingdom, right? And so who, who is this king? Where is this king reigning? Um, what kingdom is he reigning over? You know that you've got because because the the reality is you've got you know you had the United Kingdom under David and Solomon. And then you had the split after that into the to the kingdom of Judah, uh, the tribe of Judah, and, and Benjamin with that, um, and then the other ten tribes in in the, it's often called the kingdom of Israel, the northern kingdom. So you have the northern and the southern kingdom, and so you have to say, okay, am I confused? Why am I? You know, you've got Judah, you've got Israel. It's it's confusing. What's going on here? So what what's happening here is you have King Ahaz uh, ruling in Jerusalem, and when you have a ruler in Jerusalem. Um, you know, my understanding is that that's always going to be the ruler of Judah, right? Jerusalem is the, the, the city in the, in the southern kingdom, uh, the capital of the southern kingdom. So when you have a, a ruler in Jerusalem, he's ruling over Judah. 
And, and this is consistent with that, um, because you have King Ahaz mentioned at the beginning of, of verse 21 here, uh, who's a terrible king, right? He, uh, it says that in, in verse, beginning in verse 2, he, um, well, in, uh, verse 1 even, he says, And he did not do what was right in the eyes of the Lord, as his father David had done. But, verse 2, he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel. He even made metal images for the Baals, and he made offerings in the valley of the son of Hinnom, and burned his sons as an offering, according to the abominations of the nations whom the Lord drove out before the people of Israel. And he sacrificed and made offerings on the high places and on the hills and under every green tree. So, when you hear this language like that, he is worshiping a, a, a god besides the Lord, right? And that's the greatest evil. And, um, and then you see him doing things like like infanticide, uh, sacrificing his own his own sons, uh, that was that was a common uh, a common practice in these other uh, other tribes that they would they would sacrifice their infants to appease their gods. Right, so he's participating in all this, and so in view of that, then uh, it says that the God, the Lord gave him into the hand of the king of Syria. There's this battle, uh, the 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 army of Judah is is destroyed by the army of Syria. And, and then, after that battle's over, in comes the army of Israel. The men of Israel took captive 200,000 of their relatives, women, sons, and daughters. And they also took much spoil for them and brought the spoil to Samaria. Uh, and so, you know, Samaria is this northern region that's a part of this, this northern kingdom. So they, they, uh, they take the, the Israelites, the, the kingdom of Israel, um, the northern kingdom, takes the, the, the 200,000 from Judah that have, have suffered in this war, and they, they take them captive. Um, verse 9, But a prophet of the Lord was there, whose name was o, uh, Oded, and, uh, and he went out to meet the army uh, that came to Samaria, and said to them, Behold, because the Lord, the God of your fathers, was angry with Judah, he gave them into your hand, but you have killed them in a rage that has reached up to heaven. And, and so now, you know, um, here you have God's judgment against sin, and, um, and, and so there's that on the one hand, there, there's, you know, God giving them over to their hands, and, um, you know, uh, and, and, and the, the spoils that come with that. But then you have this Oded, and we don't really hear anything else about Oded anywhere uh, besides, there, it says in the, a note that I've got, there's an, an Oded mentioned um, by name in 15.1 and 8, or earlier in Second Chronicles, but we really don't know much about him. But anyway, he, he's speaking, speaking God's word here. Telling them to to be released, he, he says, um, you know, you, you, you did, God gave them to your hands, but now you're going too far, right? And now you intend, verse ten. Uh, so there's this rage that has reached up to heaven, and now verse ten, you intend to subjugate the people of Judah and Jerusalem, male and female, as your slaves. Have you not sins of your own against the Lord your God? You know, there there are plenty of things that the, the, these Israelites had had done. And, uh, and so we see this distinction between man's judgment against them and, and God's uh, judgment. And, and so now uh, Oded is saying, have mercy on these, these Judeans because uh, you have sins of your own. Uh, verse 11, now hear me and send back the captives from your relatives whom you have taken, for the fierce wrath of the Lord is upon you. Uh, so then you have repentance, right? Verse 12, certain chiefs also of the men of Ephraim, um, Azariah, the son of uh, Johanan, or Johanan, Berechiah, the son of Meshalemoth, and then uh, Ye Yehezekiah, Yehezekiah, or Jehezekiah, the son of Shalom, uh, in, in the Hebrew would be with a, with a Y sound, uh, we translate that with a J, um, and then Amasa, the son of Hadlai. So you have these men who stand up against those who are coming from the war, and, um, and they say to the, the people, don't, don't bring the captives in here, right? Verse 13, you shall not bring the captives in here, for you propose to bring upon us guilt, uh, guilt against the Lord in addition to our present sins and guilt. For our guilt is great already, and there is fierce wrath against, uh, against Israel. So they, they see the, the wrong that they have done. They see the need to repent. They see the need for these men to repent, and they, and they call them to, to do that. Um, and, and then verse 15. Oh, I'm sorry, verse 14. So the armed men left the captives and the spoil before the princes and all the assembly. And then verse 15. And this is where this, uh, I, I think we can make the, the, the clear connection to, um, to the gospel. I think it's pretty obvious here. And the men who have been mentioned by name rose and took the captives. And with the spoil, they clothed all who were naked among them. They clothed them, gave them sandals, excuse me, provided them with food and drink and anointed them. 
And carrying all the feeble among them on donkeys, they brought them to their kinsfolk at Jericho, the city of palm trees, and then they return, uh, return to, to Samaria. And, um, you know, th this is, um, th th this is the, 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 um, the mercy that, that Christ uh, in, uh, calls the, 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 the man to in the gospel lesson that's the same mercy that these men show, right? They are, they are wounded, they're captive, and what do they do? They, they, they feed them and they clothe them, and, and they even carry the feeble on the donkeys, right? J that direct, uh, kind of direct reference there. So, um, you know, this is what we're called to do. And, and this is, as we, as we read the Old Testament, I, I often try to make the point that we should read it in view of Christ, and, and you know, the reminder that, um, that Christ is that one he just as we're hearing in the gospel lesson, Christ is that one who has this same mercy upon us. We deserve that wrath, right? We deserve that wrath for our guilt. Um, as I said yesterday, that nothing but, but uh, daily sin much and deserve nothing but punishment, right? But, but there is this mercy that God has upon us where he picks us up and he carries us and, and he brings us to his kingdom. And um, what, what gracious mercy that, that truly is. May we live always in that mercy. Amen. All right, we continue with the creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.